In today's unboxing, we take a look at Stormfang Gunship for the Space Wolves. Let's take a look. There are hobbyists among us, geniuses with the ability to play any game they want to. In 1978, a corporation known as The Interior isolated a young hobbyist named John and exploited his genius for their entertainment. Then one day, their hobbyist ran away. Here we have the Storm Fang gunship for the Space Wolves. Uh, this is one of their unique ships for the Space Wolves. Again, that's kind of what makes the Space Wolves a fun and unique faction within Warhammer, that they do have some unique stuff to it. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Oh, that's kind of a cool little uh, picture right here up on the, on the side. I like that. And here we can see some painting ideas, some of the different uh, uh, add-ons, some of the different things you can do probably. Uh, the different, yes, here we go. Um, so we'll look at this uh, to see what it might take, what we might be able to do to try to magnetize that. Uh, same here with the front. Uh, so here we have the gun or just the open. And then the open cockpit. Again, we'll, we'll try to take a look at that to see what all our options are. And then of course here we can see here we have the kind of the canopy and the knot. Uh, again, I'm betting a lot of this will be customizable, uh, just magnets done in the right way. Uh, you know, here we've got again more different options that I can just see just by looking here at the box. Um, lots of variants uh, that you'll be able to do here. Uh, yeah, see, Stormfang Assault Craft or Gunship or, or different options. One of the things that I have always liked about these Warhammer sets is that they do have this little paint palette right there to show some of the colors that they have used here in their little display. So if you are getting this... Uh, if you are new to the hobby, uh, you can have an idea of some of the stuff that you might need to get if you want to simulate their painting. Uh, something else to keep in mind is uh, the Warhammer uh, Games Workshop does have a pretty good channel for painting where they paint things. And I do believe they have a two or three part series on painting this very gunship. Uh, so, and it shows all the paints that they use as well. Uh, so if you do pick this up, I would recommend to go over there and take a look at that, uh, you know, to get an idea of, uh, you know, one of the, the paint schemes, uh, some little painting tips. Yes. All right, so of course we have our flight base. Nothing new there. And then one up, oh, and then transparent canopy. That is cool. So of course, if you want to paint these, uh, you might want to get some kind of mask or something, uh, like a, a, a liquid mask or something to paint over this. So that way you can paint these and not have to worry about getting paint on the transparent bits. To number three so there's three sprue and whatever that was I'm guessing that was at one point right here probably don't know and then the base and the rules what's that some other little broken part of the stand probably or the uh, just that little bit no big deal and I'm here, the water transfer sheet. Uh, now once again with these water transfers, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is cut out the transfer that you want, uh, put that in some water, it'll loosen it up from the paper, 
uh, and then you can place it where you want. Uh, the glue is already on there, so once you place it on there, once it dries, it'll be there. Um, but uh, So that's how you just cut out the, the one that you're doing at the time. Uh, again, put it in the water to, to soak it, and it'll move around, come right off, go right on there. We will look at the instructions last. Up first, we will take a look at the sprue. So here we go. Well, that is cool. And right here, here we go. These are two of the bits, or three of them actually, by the looks of it. I think showed as potential uh, customization bits or changeable bits. Um, so we'll take a look at that once we get into the instructions. Well, that's cool. See now this right here is a cool little door entrance. So it'll be interesting to see if they have like a little cover you can put on or if you can leave it blank like that. Very interesting. Some little extra little bits to wolf it up. And that's for you because we did see one guy in the driver's seat. So there's for that. Interesting. And then here's that other front little bit. Some wolf runes right there. And finally, that bit, and then there, I believe, it's going to be this or this, I think. And then here is the, going to be the bottom, uh, so there we go, so that, so the base can just fit in there. Um, so as you're, so you can have it there, you can take it off. Uh, so that's kind of cool uh, that you can, you know, take it off and fly it around. And then there's what that pilot would be, where you could choose to put the canopy on or not. And that's probably another part of it. Some little wolf heads. iconography right there that you can put on so that's cool so it looks like that might be customizable very cool let's go ahead pull you out so it looks like we have the gunship or just the storm fang so yeah there's where that that canopy there's where you got the that gun front now here that looks like they have the same and then here we can see the difference in the back. And see some different bits right there. So it looks like you'll be able to choose which ones you want. That is cool. And then potentially even choose where you want them. You know, you might not even want them here. I mean, I could see where you potentially put them 
maybe on the wings because that does kind of look like they're kind of you know flying back because if it's flying through the air I would think that that would be more you know straight back like that not you know hanging down uh, but that to be turned and placed here if it is flying through the air uh, you know that that kind of does make a little more sense and then here you're building your driver And so it looks like the head is separate. Let's see if we can find that real quick. Probably here. Here we have the shoulder pads. Now those shoulder pads don't look anything special. There's our head. All right, let's look up back at you. So there we have our head. Here we have those shoulder pads, and again, there is nothing special about that. So, and then here, even with the, the torso right there, I'm not seeing anything spectacular here. So what does that tell me? That tells me to go ahead and grab my bits box, pull out some separate, uh, more wolfy shoulder pads, pull out one of my actual wolf heads and use that instead especially i mean he's, he's under the canopy i mean bah humbug you don't need a dang helmet so yeah uh and it just fits on here i definitely would look uh when i build this guy up i'm probably definitely going to look into uh swapping this head out uh, maybe even, you know, because I am a glutton for punishment, maybe even magnetizing the head. Something that I have been known to do, especially like, say, within Blood Bowl, where I will even magnetize heads. But to magnetize this head and then magnetize a more wolf head so that way I can pop it off and pop it on so I can have him, you know, helmetless or with, you know, the, what I'm assuming, uh, the, the flight helmet. Um, and then again, for me, these shoulder pads, see there's, this one is pretty cool. Um, when you take a closer look at it, I mean, that's, that right there is definitely a wolf skull. Um, so, I mean, I can see where that's a, a driver. Um, so that, that one's actually kind of cool. That one I actually might want to look into possibly, um, molding and duplicating uh so if i was to uh do some other kind of thing where if i wanted to show a driver or if i wanted to uh make this driver uh make another version of him so i can have him uh maybe as i know it's not game mechanics wise uh but if you were to maybe come up with your own scenario or something i can see you maybe wanted to do it um but coming out with a a based version of this guy so he, he can be outside of the ship uh, and then you know especially if you magnetize the canopy to be able to put uh, which I believe is in here the uh, let's see are you over here I'm not seeing it right off but the uh, blast canopy uh, I believe is in here We'll know for sure when we get through the rest of the rule book, and it'll tell us exactly where that is. Um, but then you could possibly put that blast canopy on there, uh, so you can see that he's not in there, and then have him on the ground. Uh, I can see where that would be very fun. That'd be kind of cool. And then here we have the different gun options. So. You can either have this missile or these guns. So this looks probably pretty easy. Uh, it's coming in from the back. Ah, that might be a little more difficult. That one might be where you might have to sand down the edges a little bit. Uh, in the back, put some sprue. Uh, in the back to, to put yourself a little backing in there with a magnet on that and then a magnet here on the back of each of these so that way you can pop that on right there you know inset
because by the looks of it, it's going to come in and that little bit right there is going to glue to the front end right there. Uh, so that might take a little work. You might have to actually cut off that bottom, glue that in, so then and then uh, and then you know kind of uh, you know get some some sprue just here. Let me pull this up. Let me pull this a little closer for you guys. Just here on this bottom little bit right there, uh, cut those off. Um, and luckily, it looks like there's going to be four of them, so you have some trial and error. But cut that off. Uh, then on the back here, put some sprue, glue that in here, uh, put the magnet there on the back of that sprue, and then you can, in the back of this, and then you can pop it back on there. That's probably what we're going to have to do to magnetize those bits. Then here we go, some more different options. And these seem pretty simple, uh, where you can either have these on or by the looks of it, not have them on at all. Let me see, this is 4A. Let's see if we can find that real quick so we can take a look. That's not 4A. Part 20, 27. 27 is going to be over here. And 27, where are you? Do you guys see it? Point out 27 to me. Area 27, 27. So that's how we're looking at it right there. Put in 31, 28. 31, 28. Yeah, it's all in here, I think. the rip but I'm guessing that is where that right there is where you're going to put your magnet uh, probably from the inside So you probably have a magnet on the inside and then uh, on the outside of all of these. That is assuming that this is something that you would potentially want to see. If this isn't something you wouldn't want to see, then you can easily just put the magnets here and then get a metal backing plate for the backs of all of these so that metal is going to stick to there. And that probably would be the easiest, again, uh, especially if uh, this part will never be visible. If you always are going to have one of these three options. And then here is our different fronts. So that slides up and then that goes on. So that looks like it'll always be on. And then the wolf mount. Let's see.
There we go. And then here's the difference. So yeah, the top of the here. Again, this one might be a little more difficult to try to magnetize up. I'm thinking magnets under this canopy and then a thin strip of uh, metal um, on the underside here, maybe? Or I mean, you could easily probably even put magnets you know, on the inside there. Uh, or what you might need to do um, that's to be able to see that or not. So you don't really want to obscure that. Yeah, that one's definitely going to be a little more difficult. Because I'm guessing this is always going to be there. Nope, doesn't show it. That's potential as being there. Okay. Huh. That one might take a little bit of playing around with to see where you could put all of those magnets and how you might want to do them. And let's continue on. And then, yeah, so no, so they don't have a, a covered canopy. Now what would be interesting is to go into, say, one of our other, um, like the uh, Death Watch ship, and to see if their, um, uh, you know, covered canopy is similar to that in size, and if you could potentially uh, duplicate that and use that here uh, as a potential, you know, uh, a blast shield for this one. That would be very interesting. And then here they're showing all of the different wolf accessories that you can put on. And some ideas of where you might put them. And then, of course, the Storm Wolf variant. And they're showing them build that top gun. So, again, here under the bottom, you just stick your magnet there. Your magnet would go, you know, on the underside there. Same thing for that. So you can just swap it out. And then, actually, that would be this whole bit that whole bit right there would be getting magnetized so let's see do they show any kind of and they're just showing it just going in yeah they're just showing it go in uh, so you might need to put like a little, uh, you know, for a little extra support, a little extra sprue uh, on the inside that goes across there that you can put a magnet in the center, a magnet in the center so you can pop that on. And then a magnet, uh, again, maybe on the uh, underside because you don't want to put the magnet there because this is visible by the looks of it uh, for this model. Let's see, are there going to be plates to put on there? I don't see any. Uh, there's symbols they're showing. Um, so possibly you could take these uh, extras. Where did they have those? There we go. Uh, take these plates and again put a magnet on the inside of each one of those uh, and then a magnet there so that way you can take that plate stick it on there or 
take your plate or your magnet and put it on again either side so those two magnets would hold that on or the decorative bit for that. So again, with most of these, uh, for all the different variants, I am seeing, you know, potential uh, for you to be able to magnetize everything up. You just need to think ahead, think about, uh, you know, what it is you're trying to achieve. Look at all of the different variants, all the different options. Uh, this right here is absolutely fantastic. Uh, this right here is great for photocopy to do some test color runs for coloring with maybe some colored pencils or something. Or again, so you can mark your different areas, so you can mark the different changes, uh, variances, so you know where you, you, you need to look into doing potential magnetization. Um, and then some slight rules, not really much going on there at all. Um, but, uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of a planning and to just remember to use what you've got. Um, you know, even when it just comes to, you know, this border sprue, that right there makes fantastic support sprue. Again, for like right here, so you can put in that support sprue under there, so you can put your magnet on that, so you can pop that guy right on there, take him on and off. Um, for the front here, so you can, you know, put that little support there, so you can pop that on, or so you can pop that one on. Uh, you know, just, you know, just think about what all you need. Uh, then the other thing is, as you start doing more and more models, you will start uh, using more and more of your um, Tamiya Thin, which is probably what a, a majority of the people use, um, either that or the, the Citadel plastic uh, glue. But using your uh, Tamiya Thin, you know, those little square glass uh, uh, plastic glue bottles, which funny enough isn't even glue itself. It actually causes the plastic to melt, causes a chemical reaction. So you actually are melting the plastic. So then when the plastic then dries, it literally fuses those two pieces of plastic together. They will never come apart because it in a sense makes it into one piece of plastic. But what is really great is once you are down to a very small amount uh, within your glue, you can then take a bunch of your sprue, cut it up into little chunks, start putting that into the group, the, that glue stirred up, let it completely dissolve, and then you have something that people will refer to as sprue goo. You can think of this as welding material for your figures. So again, if you are putting the support beam in here, uh, you can glue that down, and then if you make your sprue, glue, sprue goo, then put that in there and put it all around just as if you were welding metal and putting it in there uh, to, uh, um, you know, to really secure and really, uh, you know, bond those little bits together. And then it could even potentially be used for some gap fill. Uh, but for gap fill, I really do prefer something like a Vallejo's plastic putty. But the sprue goo is great as a plastic welding material, uh, especially for support and things of that nature uh, in vehicles, especially when you're doing these kind of uh, customizations and add-ons. Well, I hope this unboxing of the Stormfang gunship for the Space Wolves has helped you to determine if this set is something you would be interested in, if it is something that you would be looking to add to your collection. And then I hope my, my talk of magnetization and really being able to look at all of the different potential options has helped you uh, to plan your build, uh, plan on, on what you might want to try to do uh, for your version of the Storm Fang gunship. Well, until next time, everybody, I'll see you later.